When Mitch Friedman realised he was going bald, he decided to do something about it by getting himself a hair replacement system. Or a wig. A really bad wig. Mitch is the author of Hell to Pay, My Ridiculous Year Wearing a Hair Replacement. Good afternoon to you, Mitch. Good afternoon, Sean. How are you? Not too bad. What age were you, more or less, when you first noticed that you were going bald? Oh, I'd say it started around 18 or so. Oh, wow. But but that's not to say that anybody else noticed. Um, right, yeah. I, I Both both my uh, grandfather and my father and one of my uncles was bald, so I knew it was inevitable. Um, so I was on the lookout for it. Right, okay, because that's very young to start going bald. Well, like I said, it, 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 no one else noticed for quite a while. Mm. I had an enormous amount of curly hair for most of my, well, early life, anyway. I mean, my father um, said I looked like an armpit with eyes, basically, yes. so that's... <laughs> so you had what, kind of, sort of an Afro-type mop of hair. Yeah, yeah, sort of a yeah. Yeah, naturally curly... Uh, somebody else said I looked a little like Ronald McDonald. Right, um, okay. <laughs> but my hair wasn't red. Right, okay, yeah. Yes, that's uh, uh, yeah, nice of them to say that. So presumably there was a few year, uh, there was a period of a few years where nobody really noticed. You were able to probably make strategic decisions with your hair to to cover any loss of hair. Sure. Did you get to a point then when you couldn't cover it up any longer, and you thought I'll go and get something done now before it becomes apparent? I got to the point where, I mean, frankly, I probably didn't even need to do anything. Everybody else thought I looked fine, but I was just getting very um, self-conscious about it um, because, um, you know, I had so much hair, and then I was, uh, you know, aware that one day I wouldn't have any. So um, I started to feel very self-conscious about it, and um, I was on, st- I was part of a um, improv sketch comedy performing group um, on stage in New York City. Uh, so that made me even more self-conscious because, you know, with a spotlight on you, uh, the bald spot shows up better. So, uh, it was just a combination of all sorts of things that made me incorrectly assume that I needed to do this. Yeah. Did it affect any other, was it affecting, or did you have the perception it was affecting any part of your life? Was it affecting your love life, for instance? Uh, possibly. It's hard to say because I didn't really have a love life. So, um, it was, it's hard. There's no way to quantify what I would have had or didn't have, uh, if I didn't do it. So, mm. uh, but one thing's for sure. Once I did do it, I had absolutely zero love life. That I can promise you that. So it was called the hair club for men, which that makes it sound very collegiate. Uh, and essentially it was a kind of a fancy wig. What was the actual fit? Cause, and, but they didn't call it wig. As I understand, they called it a hair system. Uh, yes, they called it a hair system, uh, which in itself is ludicrous, just the concept of a hair system. But what it actually was, uh, and I didn't know this until actually the day that they put it on me, it was basically a canvas that you would do needlepoint on mm. um, in the shape of a, uh, a yarmulke, which is, you know, a yeah. Jewish skull cap with hair woven into it. And the day that I went to have it put on, they um, I still didn't quite know what it was they were going to do to me. I thought it was they were going to weave it into my existing hair. But what they did was um, they grabbed a um, a razor and shaved off a U-shaped moat off the top of my head of my hair and then glued it onto me. (laughs) And And I didn't know this was going to happen. Could you see where your hair ended and, and the new hair began? Absolutely, because it was a different color. It wasn't as curly. Yeah, it was. It looked. It looked completely obvious and embarrassingly bad. Did they um, get? Did they give you instructions? As, because presumably the, the glue you had to keep regluing it. Then did you? Yes. Well, that's uh, what happened. Was um, every five or six weeks, I would have to go back because the hair underneath my actual hair that I still had would grow, and the hair system would get slightly more loose with each day and um, look even less convincing because it would be further uh, above my head than it should be. And um, I'd have to go back and they'd have to take it off, which was kind of painful because they'd have to snip the glue. You know, if it's something glued to your head when you try to remove that, that's going to hurt. They'd have to take it off, reshave the 
the U the U shaped bulb thing and glue it back, you know, wash it and then glue it back down. And 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 I'd have to pay uh, about fifty dollars each time I went back to have this done. Did you go back to have it done? Yes, <laughs> I had this thing for a year. <gasps> When you went, when you'd go back, would there be many other men there? Yes, I was. Yes, it was. Um, it was a, a pretty successful company. I don't know why or how, but uh, it was. And and I, there'd be people in the waiting room, and they're they're all men, and they all, you know, they were all uh, kind of had gone, undergone the the same procedure, and um, they all kind of looked slightly wrong in the same way, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but um yeah so well, there, there wasn't anybody wasn't... else there and you thought oh, well his at least looks convincing yeah, but, you know a few people looked uh, i guess it was kind of hit or miss uh i think if you have straight hair you have a better chance of having something that looks the same or mm. similar but you know some some guys things looked okay others looked uh, as bad as mine i mean I, I i personally felt like mine looked the worst but maybe everybody feels that could you take um, a shower wearing this thing? Oh well, yeah, I had to do that, and that was impossible because not only do you have to wash your real hair, but you have to wash this hair system, and you have to wash underneath it, in between the hair system and your real hair, and you have to be very careful about it because this, it's it was very expensive. Yeah. So I, uh, it was impossible to style. It was, uh, I never made it look anywhere near as good as it looked on the days that I went to have it put back on, and even then it didn't look that good. And it was, it was itchy, it uh, was very hot in the summer. You couldn't really scratch your head when it was on because you, you, it's basically like trying to rub an expensive piece of sandpaper across your head. Did you tell all, say, you know, friends, colleagues, did you tell everybody you were getting this done? I, I assume there were some people you mustn't have told. Did you, did you notice any change in their demeanour when they first saw you with this new thing in your head? Um, I didn't tell that many people, um, but once... Um once it happened, there was no need to actually tell anybody. It was <laughs> blatantly obvious. And they all, they were all, you know, initially, um, you know, within, depending on how well I knew the person, they were uh, initially uh, sympathetic or tried to make believe that it didn't look as horrible as it actually did. But um, pretty much universally, everybody, within a short period of time, started to make a lot of fun of me. Um, and I made fun of myself because it was really just so ridiculous that it was impossible not to make fun of myself. But, I mean, I had one friend who um, started to call me Sissy System. Uh, <laughs> so that will give you an example of, you know, the sensitivity that people were treating me with. Also, presumably, because I did ask you about your love life, that it, you were then presented with a situation that if you did meet... Uh, someone special that at some point you might have to have that conversation with them and say I've got something to tell you if you haven't noticed it already right right and um, but uh, either luckily or not that conversation never had to happen because A I never had a love life and B anybody would have already figured out that conversation before I started in on it <laughs> there was no, it was very obvious there was no way anybody was fooled uh, so there's a lot more detail than that in the book it's called Hell to Pay My Ridiculous Year Wearing a Hair Replacement Mitch Friedman thank you very much thank you